Hey, thanks for tuning in. Rockstar of YouTube astrology and my friend Babajit has joined me today and uh, I think it's the first time Babajit for you. Thank you so much for joining and it's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to have you back again for recording. You know, it's great. I remember last time when we recorded. <laughs> yeah, we did eclipses. Yeah, and in fact, so many other astrologers have told me, you know, that, oh, what was that game that you played, you know, like, guessing game. We also want to do that. Yeah, I wasn't part of that game. I think Lars, Fernando and uh, Vanita were part of it. I was just watching it. So, <laughs> but I think that that was fun. Like, the that series of, I mean, I think you did two or three uh, videos with Lars, Fernando and Vanita on that yeah, show. Yes. So, what so, I've been following to... your, uh, like, the spirituality stuff. I think it's one of the best things that people can, you know, like, take out of your channel. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of explore some spirituality with you because at the end of the day, astrologers need to be spiritual at some level. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's impossible for us to remain a spiritual or non-spiritual uh, even though we don't realize the spiritual sense within us i think we are spiritual in many ways so yeah so i just wanted to explore some of those with you and how why i mean do, you might have a specific reason as to why astrologers need to be spiritual and uh, why uh, i mean astrologers need to be spiritual in, in terms of uh, you know, helping their client or, uh, you know, imparting their knowledge to the other astrologers or other learners or enthusiasts uh, through various channels, whatever it may be. But still, at the end of the day, the greater sense within an astrologer is going to play a major role in terms of how they communicate things and whatever comes out of their mouth or comes out of their uh, words if they're a writer, I think, a lot depends upon their spiritual sense or the inner self, what they actually are. So I think you can give a better perspective of this because, uh, yeah, you, you have done a lot of videos on Bhagavatam or Gita or other spiritual, you know, stuff. So I think it's, you, you, you should probably give a better perspective of uh, an astro importance or significance of spiritual sense within an astrology. Yeah, thank you very much for letting me speak on that. <laughs> and today is also Akshay Tritya, so I'm so excited to start this off today only. Okay. So, uh, I will start with a dialogue actually, rather than going into philosophical stuff, which many people already know. So once mm -hmm. I was uh, sitting with one of my gurus, very senior, so I was talking to him, you know, that, oh, I do consultations and, you know, like I have this videos and you know blah 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 all the stuff fancy stuff <laughs> and then he told me that uh, your entire channel and your all your consultations is a failure and I was like what <laughs> I mean <laughs> how do you say that it's a failure <laughs> it's a complete failure it's total failure and I'm like come on I mean <laughs> 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 I mean that's dogmatic, yeah. Yeah, and, and he he's a very senior guru. You know, you you cannot just uh, argue with him like that. Then I asked him, uh, "Can you please tell me that why why do you think like that?" He said, "If you," he said, "the ultimate purpose of any any Vedanga, you know, you take it as because what is Jyotish? It's a Vedanga, right? Part of the Vedas." of the Vedas, any any part, either it's astrology or Ayurveda or yoga, is only one. What's the ultimate purpose? The ultimate purpose is that you, after talking to you or after listening to your videos, that person should be inspired to go and join a nearby spiritual community. That is the ultimate purpose of anything. And he said. If you make any video without stressing this point, you have simply wasted 20, 30 minutes. Nothing you have done. And I was like, wow. 
so that is why i make it a point to say it in most of my videos you know that go and join a spiritual community because what actually if you break the word jyotish jyotish is what basically they say it is you know uh, light that leads to god they say like this but the problem with today's astrology and astrologers is they have just used it as a fancy uh, tool which you know gives some predictions about you know your past or your future also because one of my gurus once said you know that it is there is nothing great in seeing the future because people think that oh you know he's so brilliant you know he told what's there in the future i mean if a normal person goes to a surgeon and he sees the surgeon is you know cutting the heart and you know planting another organ there he will feel oh my god he's so great you know he's, he's <laughs> mind blowing he's stupendous he's out of the world but he knows how to do it and if you learn probably you can also do it sure so similarly astrology the prediction part is just like another skill it doesn't mean that you know you you are a self realized yogi if you are giving a prediction <laughs> self realized yogi yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now in earlier days when the rishis used to predict they didn't used to see horoscopes like for example when narad muni came and he you know told when Ma, he he went to mother parvati and she told please see my hand and tell me what kind of a husband i will get then narad muni although he was looking at her hand <laughs> but what he said about lord shiva who is you know supposedly her husband in the future is not by seeing her hand narad muni exactly saw he was in the future <laughs> and then he was speaking he was not like okay your hand is like this so this will happen that will happen no it doesn't work like that so astrology is the light that leads us to god and today what has happened is it has become very much uh, you know like a science of fortune telling because the problem is many times this word fortune telling can be a bit ambiguous because many times and i am very sure you will also have this experience when you do consultations people may not have fortunes in life yeah and when people come to you for consultations what is their inherent expectation inherent that one day i will have fortune in life and this person has to tell me when do i have that fortune so the person already assumes that my situation in the future will be better than my current situation and that is why when you say things which you know <laughs> which people don't like to hear then they get get disappointed because they that's exactly the opposite of why they came to you at the first place now the prediction part of astrology is perfectly fine there's no nothing wrong with that but ultimately if you do not know the signs of spirituality from the bhagavad gita or from the shrimad bhagavatam you cannot have the complete holistic understanding of astrology and i can very well prove it to you <laughs> and i have done this yeah. in, i have done this in many videos but i will take uh, one small example here all right i mean you you already spoke uh, you know many times offline we have spoke about how important it is to find out or understand the underlying truth behind our own spiritual ideologies such as bhagavatam or gita and yeah. without that an astrologer really is uh, just you know it's re he's really nothing so i mean you have emphasized this fact many times and we have had this conversation offline many times as well so yeah yeah so let's take a very small example and this this alone is enough to understand everything nothing else is required let's take the example of jupiter jupiter is the planet of spirituality they say like this right <laughs> sure and uh, they also say that he gets exalted in the sign of cancer uh -huh. all right now so is he exalted in the sign of cancer is something that we don't ponder upon from a spiritual or philosophical yeah what 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 
people will say is you will see videos in YouTube and I'm not uh, hinting at anybody. This is a general consensus which people have these days about Jupiter in Cancer. Now what they will do is they will take one planet. It's like A plus B whole square. They will do it like this. They will take a planet. They will take a sign and they will mix it like this. It's like you know, cricket. <laughs> you throw a ball and then you hit a six. It's like that. So what they will do, they will say that oh jupiter like there was one channel who said that uh, jupiter gets exalted in cancer why because cancer is the sign of the mother okay uh -huh. and mother is the first uh, guru of the child <laughs> okay and in fact, father is probably the first guru yeah um, yeah okay <laughs> could be father or could be mother <laughs> No, I, I mean, I cannot kind of agree with that even from a uh, that particular point of view. So, yeah, yeah, that that I perfectly understood when you said that. Even if you <laughs> say, well, let's assume that there are no fathers in this world. Okay, let's assume that there are only mothers. Okay, so you see, the mother is the guru, or or the other reasons they say that oh, fourth house is the cancer is the original fourth house. Okay, so now they will mix house and sign together, then they will say that. Oh, actually, fourth house is the house of peace and happiness and content. So that is why when Jupiter comes there, that is why everybody likes to stay in home, you know, because it's very peaceful. I mean, you seriously think Parashara would give an exaltation of the greatest benefit by seeing a house of property, for God's sake. I mean, who would Parashara do that? Never. Why would he do that? But if you <laughs> if you read the Bhagavad Gita, then you will understand. Jupiter is what basically? Jupiter in essence, because today we are talking of spirituality and Jyotish and all the big stuff. So Jupiter is what basically? The kind of spiritual pro progress that we have made in our lifetimes, right? That's what sure. is presented by Jupiter. Now, if you read the Gita, Bhagavad Gita, there are different yoga systems Krishna talks about. The karma yoga, jnana yoga, ashtang yoga, then it culminates into bhakti yoga, the last. Fine. And Krishna says, bhakti maim param kritwa, that only by using bhakti yoga you can obtain me very fast. Krishna says that in the Gita. So now, when a person, okay, let's forget about people, but Jupiter in Cancer. Now, what is Cancer? Cancer is the sign of emotions. So when Jupiter goes into cancer, that is there he exalted because it's like saying you are doing bhakti yoga there. It is not because it is the fourth house of mother or it's you know property vehicle. It has nothing to do with that. Jupiter, your spiritual quotient has reached so high that you have you can emotionally connect to God now. No other planet gets exalted in cancer. No other planet. Sure. So th this is one one very simple example, and you can also take the example of Saturn. Saturn gets exalted where in Libra they say, right? Mm -hmm. Now why what they say? Why does it get exalted in Libra? There was one one video I saw. Somebody said, you know, and this was the funniest answer I've heard. I've never heard anything funnier than this. It was said in the video that. Oh, Libra is, you know, seventh house. Saturn likes teamwork, you know. So Saturn gets exalted there. And then I was thinking, Saturn is the Karaga for seclusion and loneliness, right? Yeah. How, how in the universe is he getting exalted in Libra, for God's sake? <laughs> and why will he get exalted there? Teamwork. <laughs> yeah, Libra is teamwork. So Saturn... This is like, you know, one plus one equal to two, that style. Libra is teamwork. Saturn is, you know, hard work. So teamwork and hard work equal to success. They will make rules like this. But if you read the Gita, then you will know what, why actually Saturn gets exalted there. Because Krishna says in the Gita, the Anta Kalecha Mame was Maran Muktwa Kalevaram. That at the time of your death, whatever is your desire, that will decide the next birth. Now, which is the house of death? Okay, again, that is the biggest, you know, <laughs> eight, seven, 
Yeah, seventh house is officially the house of death within the kendra. That means the body is dissolving because the sun sets there. Sure. Because exactly. sun, sun is the atma, which is you know like sun is the kingdom, as I say. Your kingdom is ending in this world. That means you are perishing. Yes, that that's what is the seventh house. So I mean, Vedic astrology kind of takes a seventh house, but. Uh, even yeah, in Vedic eighth house, yeah, seen eighth house and uh, eighth house is more of that you know physical dissolution of the body that you could say. Yeah, so th I mean there is a lot of you know uh, different ideologies in the house of death, but still, yeah, please continue. Yes, so seventh house may not necessarily mean the death of the body, but it means uh -huh. the de death of the uh, of the conception of being in this world. That's what the sun is. That's why the sun sets there. And in the first house, when it's sunrise, the sun is rising up there. So now that means death has an indication of the seventh house. Seventh house is one of the indicators of death. So that means when you are dying, when you are dying, what desires you have, that will decide how much more or less you will suffer in the next birth. And Saturn is the Karaka for suffering. So sure. that is why he feels ex he gets exalted there because that is the place where he can exercise his power the most. Okay, you have these desires, take another birth. You will be born again. You have to study A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Again, you have to study engineering. Again, medical science. Again, you have to be a you know an economist. Again, you will be a politician. Keep, keep running like this, life after life after life keep running like this so these are some small examples and i can go go into a lot of detail but because of the interest of time i am keeping it very short so these are some examples uh, without which uh, you cannot uh, exactly help a person one last thing i will say is for example uh, there's a lot of talk on remedies these days Oh, do this remedy, do that remedy, take gemstone, all, all, all the fancy remedies, you know. But according to the Srimad Bhagavatam, which was written by the great sage Vyasdev in the pinnacle of his uh, spiritual maturity, after writing all the scriptures, when he was feeling unhappy. Yeah, that's that's the more, you know, the funny part where someone who has already written various uh, you know, unassailable scriptures in Hinduism. Finally, he feels unhappy that he has not written something on Krishna and only Krishna. Fine, and and he conceives Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> yeah. So, so Srimad Bhagavatam in the Bhagavatam, uh, if you go to my website in the home page, you will find a shloka there. All right. That shloka is being said by whom? And there are eighteen thousand verses. In the Srimad Bhagavatam. Why mm -hmm. did I include that shloka only? Why not the other? <laughs> because that is one of the top 10 verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then it's up to the people to decide which is your favorite among those top 10. But in my in, in my opinion, that is a very important verse. There, Lord Brahmaji, Lord Brahma, the creator of this, this Brahmanda, he says that. Tate Anukampam Susumikshamano Bhunjana Evatma Kritam Vipakam. He says he is offering prayer to Lord Vishnu. He is telling that, Oh Lord Vishnu, whatever miseries, whatever problems I am facing in this world is because of my own karma. And whoever understands this and says thank you to you. <laughs> That uh, person, Jive Tayo Mukti Pade Sadayabhag, he is eligible to claim liberation. My God, that's a statement. Sure. All the all the remedies. If you just understand this verse, no other remedies required. Every now and then you will see people cursing planets. Oh, Saturn has done this. <laughs> and the I mean, people. People always kind of attach some causal uh, kind of attitude towards planets and uh, they say that this planet has done this to me or that yeah. planet has done that to me. But in reality, I think it is we who mess up with the energies of planets. That's what Ro that's what Robert Hand has said. We don't mess up with the energy of planet, 
I mean, planets don't mess up our lives, but we mess up with the energies that planets give us. So, no planet can do any harm or uh, no planet can really do any benevolence. It is just that how we react uh, to various energies in this uh, planets and various choices that we make in our lives and uh, we give rise to some specific karma that is usually a result of a specific choice that we made in our life. So I think it is all interconnected uh, in many ways. So just to blame that this planet has done something to me or that planet has done something to me is, you know, it is just a blame game that, you know, people used to play. Yeah, in fact, that day I was uh, having an app in my mobile. There was an update, Astrology app. I will not take the name of the app. Uh, it was to, it was popping up. Uh, is Shani creating troubles in your married life? And then I was like, what a ridiculous statement that is. Why will a planet create trouble in your married life? What he has to do with your married life? <laughs> Why? It doesn't work like that. You know, the planets are not sitting there to, you know, punish you and, you know, whip you. Oh, you did this, you know, I'll punish. So Lord Brahma says there that, that Whoever say, whoever understands this and says thank you to you, he is eligible to claim liberation. If if somebody just understands this, all the problems in life they are solved. All, For sure, all, all may not be all, but ninety nine percent of the problems. Because then what will happen? Your consciousness will shift from outside to inside. Like what happens these days? Like in India, there is election right now. So many yeah. people I see, they ask me, well, what do you think? Who will win in this election? Or I see people blaspheming political parties and politicians. Yes? Yeah, I think it's becoming very, you know, if it is astrological, it's fine, but it's becoming very ugly. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's so ridiculous that now somebody says, that, oh, look how disgusting that political leader is. Now that's a contradictory statement. Because... He's a political leader. Leader means he has been he has been elected, right? He or she? Uh -huh. He has not gone and he did not go and sit there. You have put him there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean you are reaping the you are reaping the you know the benefits of your own choice, which is basically yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so, I, I think that kind of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so then what happens? Suppose that particular political leader from that particular party does something wrong according to the opposition or somebody. Then what happens? They will shift the entire burden of their life to that person. And this is not with politics. This is with every place. Corporate, you know, your boss uh. or manager, anybody. Or within the school. Oh, the principal is not good actually, you know. <laughs> I mean, you are not sitting and studying. That is your responsibility. <laughs> and then you say, oh, the principal has not appointed good teachers, you know. <laughs> no, I think what, uh, I think it all leads to one particular statement that Krishna says, first look after yourself and clear your own dirt and then you can preach others. But by the time your life ends, you will just be on the verge of perfecting yourself and you won't even be perfect yourself. So, yeah. Yeah, so that that one statement, if from tomorrow every astrologer emphasizes this on their videos, that let us learn to take responsibility for our own karma, you know, which 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 you will not maybe find in astrology textbooks. You may not find this statement, but you will find this in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So there are so many pearls of wisdom about remedies and so many other things, you know, which you will find. In, in divine scriptures like this and there's another shloka where you know Lord Shiva is telling to Parvati that one, one, when a person is devoted to Lord Vishnu Narayana Parasarve Nakutaschana Vibhyati Swargapa Varga Narkeshu Api Tulyati Darshina that for him heaven and hell is the same uh -huh. I think it uh, it is just the perception of how heaven or hell is going to be while we are on earth in physical form but once this physical form is lost, we don't know whether it is hell or heaven. So there is no yeah. point in perceiving about what it is. So. Yeah, and Lord Shiva specifically gives these two extremes, you know, because he wants to demonstrate that the quality of a great soul. He says, 
even if he is in hell he will not be miserable yeah but for sure in heavens he will he will be equipoised you know prashantatma as lord krishna says so to to achieve that you need to do spiritual practices in your life and then only only then you will uh, be that be at that state otherwise what will happen oh i got a promotion yay status update instagram update this update that update 2000 <laughs> likes you know viral video oh my god you are all over the place and then suddenly one day you are fired then oh i just deactivated my facebook right because people are asking me we didn't see any updates from last 3 years what's going on with your career sir so if we want to be equipoised as krishna says then we need to do spiritual practices and in in the purview of that we need to practice astrology then astrology is a very beautiful thing it's a very beautiful tool it may not be precise but it's still beautiful <laughs> yeah i mean again that's about its precision or something i think it's time for another video but still uh precision depends upon various other factors but still these are the qualities or ideologies that we need to kind of impart on ourselves or within ourselves uh it, it it is not necessarily about preaching any religion or something you can exactly. choose to do from whichever religion uh you hail from or whichever philosophy that you follow uh it is it is not specific or it is not attached to one particular thing exactly. so philosophy is just universal humanity is just universal so uh, so is astrology astrology is universal so i yeah, think that brings principle of you know taking responsibility for example this is there universally in all all the religions in all the textbooks and there are so many stories and you can go on and on talking but that's like something very universal that's beautiful and exactly. if somebody is well versed with uh, scriptures like you know bible or quran then they will also see the same coherence is there with the gita you know and there are so many stories you can you know go and on linking parallels we can do that in some other video but it doesn't matter sure. which tradition you are belonging to but if that is the goal spiritual elevation and then you use astrology as a road map so for example i will end by saying this that suppose you you have a goal that you know i want to receive spiritual elevation or enlightenment and then you go to an astrologer and he says oh my dear sir uh, maybe you will get married at 40 may not be quite early and maybe unfortunately it could happen that after 10 years you divorce all right <laughs> could happen could happen let's take worst case scenarios right late marriage early divorce that's like the worst case scenario in india at least okay may not be in the west even now in the west also so suppose a person gets he he knows that he gets married at 40 and then by 50 he is divorced so th- then what happens then imagine he was a normal human being somebody in india you know without having any spiritual practices then that would be like the biggest chaos for him in his life oh my god i ended up marrying at 40 and then after 10 years it was a divorce all my 10 years it's like a waste of time with somebody but now <laughs> suppose he has a spiritual goal then he will know this brahma ji shloka then he will say oh anyways you know my goal is somewhere else i have to go from you know uh gindi to tambaram <laughs> in chennai so, okay maybe people won't understand what is gindi to tambaram <laughs> <laughs> these are two places in chennai but yeah. but we we know the goal all right the goal is clear then in your car in your taxi from gindi to tambaram if somebody is sitting and you know they are just you know doing certain things which you don't like you will not mind very much because you know anyways you know they are going to get down after some time or i will reach tambaram after some time this person in this taxi is not going to stay with me for the rest of my eternity so even if i don't get along with that person it's still fine i will still adjust and that was the ethos of the vedic tradition in india that you know by changing the person you will you cannot change your karma yes that is why the vedic culture says you know do not tolerate yeah yeah so that that's what the goal is clear then all these things don't matter but i see so many mails i get you know oh my uh, girlfriend has cheated on me my husband has left me this has happened that has happened i want to commit suicide why 
because there is no spiritual goal you are staying here and when you are here it, it's very important that things are good here otherwise your life is ruined but suppose your goal is there then here even if it's not that great it's you, you will still manage it <laughs> just a matter of time you know yeah that is all i would say and anything else <laughs> i think it was an enlightening session and um, we we should kind of do this uh, casual conversation type of stuff kind of detaching ourselves from intensive astrology and uh, saturn in fourth house <laughs> but still do some really good stuff which can actually promote our own personal life and also probably if someone is watching this for their own you know betterment and yes before i end as i said in the beginning <laughs> the aim of every video <laughs> that people should be inspired to join some spiritual community so my humble request to whoever is watching this or whoever is sharing this or even if you have liked it or you have disliked please go to your nearest spiritual community on saturday or sunday or on friday please do that okay otherwise <laughs> yeah, doesn't, doesn't matter even if you dislike the video but just baba ji this kind of yeah it's you fine know, whatever you wish is fine for sure for sure yeah for sure you can dislike the video please dislike the video please unsubscribe unsubscribe from the channel oh. <laughs> so, but just go and join the spiritual community uh, and that is what is the you know generous uh, advice that babaji would give yeah rather than saying <laughs> advice i would say it's my humble request otherwise if my yeah. guru sees this video and then he will ask me you know so how many people <laughs> <laughs> so then i have to give him the count you know oh yeah after this two people message me that and that that's happening so many people tell me you know that uh, we are going to this community that community and now gradually you know things are changing but it's like a long road ahead of course you know so uh, so until we we kind of come together to give yet another uh, spiritual advice or recommendation uh, that's bye bye Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.